Folks at home, welcome back to the Crimson Oak Pond, and if you missed the previous videos in this series, I'll put a link down in the description below. And since it's been a couple of weeks since our last videos, I've got a lot to catch you up on, and if you enjoy all the wildlife, you're in for a treat in this one. We're also going to give you an update on the newest member of the family, and the first little bass we caught out of the pond named Tiger. And we started a new mini-series in these pond videos called the Piranha Playback, and that's where you would see our aggressive bluegills going airborne chasing their next meal, which is a protein pellet. But unfortunately, someone decided to ruin those plans this week. <laughs> and check that out. I've never seen a blue heron swimming and trying to catch a fish. And he missed that one. And you can also see the new baby ducks in the background by the oak throne. And once they saw all the aggressive fish, they decided it was time to get out of here. But since we couldn't do the piranha playback this week, I decided to put together another wildlife clip for you all. And now it's time to check in on tiger and copper. And if you missed it, we went out and caught one small bass and one small bluegill out of the pond and put them in the aquarium so we could watch them and learn a little bit about their personalities and see how aggressive they were. And folks, it's looking like tiger is going to be every bit as aggressive as Moby. He literally swims around the tank, smacking his lips, basically telling us to feed him more, and he eats all day long. And the problem is he constantly swims and burns off all of his energy all day. So he's always hungry. So we decided to start training him for the Pet Bass Olympics and getting him to go airborne for some of these earthworms. And we used to do the same thing with Moby whenever he was little, but this time we're trying our best not to let the little bass jump out of the aquarium like Moby did. And Tiger's actually doing something that none of our other pet bass ever did, and that's eating some of the protein pellets. I've heard about the hatcheries being able to feed train the bass on pellets before, but all of our other pets never liked them. <laughs> but as you can see, the tiger will basically eat anything that comes his way. And for those of you that are new to the channel, several years ago, we used to fish with this technique that I called the toad dangler, and we would basically throw a frog out and let it hang over a limb and try to get a bass to jump up in the air and eat the frog. And whenever you actually make it happen, it's one of the coolest topwater strikes you'll ever see. And we even created a Toad Dangler t-shirt. And the problem with the five acre pond is since we had to put in a clay blanket, we're not able to add any trees around it because the clay is basically a liner and the tree roots may puncture a hole through it. But I think I've got a good plan on how to put some cypress trees out in the middle of the pond so that one day here in the future, we can bring back the Toad Dangler technique. All right, out here at the local nursery, Picking out some trees. These are the bald cypress trees that I'm after, but they're a little bit on the big side. Hopefully this is what ours will look like next year. These are 30 gallon bald cypress trees. So we're looking for the size of one lower than this, the 15 gallon. So I got two cypress trees picked out. We're also gonna get some extra topsoil just in case we need it. I got my friend here loading that onto the trailer now. And I'm not sure if you're able to see this or not, but if you can remember, we had an underwater road bed built right here in this area that we put some pea gravel on. And I think that's going to be the perfect spot for the cypress trees. All right, got the trees out here, everything ready to go. These are two cypress trees. And what I'm thinking about doing is putting them in these wooden buckets. These buckets are made out of white oak wood. And they also have the metal strapping around the outside, so they should hold up for years. But I oversized them and that should allow the cypress trees to grow for at least a couple of years. And then after that, I may have to revisit and get them something a little bit bigger. All right, spot number one is gonna be right there. Real close to Bonnie's Bayou. Close to a feeder right there. And I think spot number two is gonna be right out there at the end of the road bed. Perfect. Spot one, 
spot two now i'm going to anchor them down i'm going to put cinder blocks around the outside rope to strap it down we'll come in and put the tree in last all right now here's the fun part getting the cypress tree out there i hope it floats oh yeah perfect so here's my problem folks it's really a two-man job because if i let go of this for one second then the tree leans over a little bit and all that soil that I put in slides up under the root ball and it just comes further out of the water. All right, I'm determined not to let this wind get me. So I'm gonna, I got some tree stakes. I'm gonna go get some tree stakes and try to stake it up and then fill it in. Absolutely impossible one man job. As Soon as I get a stake in, start staking the next one down. Wind shifts directions and blows it. Pulls this stake up. Got to have another person here to hold the tree while I fill in the dirt. All right, folks. I was not going to be able to go to sleep tonight without these trees standing upright, so I stacked some cinder blocks on it. This is just a temporary solution until I can get somebody else out here to get it set up right. But this will be a good trial period for these two trees, and if it ends up working out, we may come back and add a few more later. But either way, I think the birds are definitely going to be happy, and now we have some limbs to hang a frog over. So in our last video, I showed you all this clip and said how odd it was that a coyote was basically hanging out with a deer and they didn't seem to mind. And I had dozens of people write and say that it was probably a fox. So I was determined to find out this week if this was a fox or a coyote. I still think that it was a coyote, but thankfully I was able to get a ton of footage and we should definitely be able to decide what it is by some of these clips. But as you can see here again, the deer do not mind hanging out around these animals, and they definitely don't feel threatened by them. <laughs> and you can even see the buck stomp on the ground to get some of those fresh peanuts. So I got some really cool clips of this animal this week, and I'm pretty sure that he was chasing field mice most of the nights. And you'll also see some clips here where the coyote is biting at the plants. So I did a little research, and coyotes will eat insects, fruit, vegetables, roots, garbage, pet food, and basically anything else they can find. And I think that's what he's doing here is eating either insects or maybe some blooms that are on these weeds. But just what I can see from watching them this week, they have a really good nose because that peanut hay is kind of thick and it would definitely be hard to catch a little mouse in it. But I've seen them catch quite a few. And so we can add another one to the list. I've got the cats and owls chasing after the mice and now we can add the coyotes to the list. Something I never thought I'd see. But I think we've actually got a pack of coyotes, and usually that is one male, one female, and their pups. And it does look like a couple of these are smaller. But it is really cool to watch their behavior. playing around a little bit, but I'm still just fascinated at the fact that the deer do not seem to mind them at all. And again, my theory is that maybe the deer are too big for the coyotes around here and they only mess with the fawns. But this is the only daylight shot I got of them all week and I would definitely say it's a coyote and not a fox. And now it's time for an update on the duck family. So a few weeks ago, these black-bellied whistling ducks hatched nine new babies out here at the pond and you can see they've already gotten pretty big and they're almost big enough to fly <laughs> and as you can see here the mama's teaching the babies how to dive and they're having lots of fun with it and the good news about the whole deal is that the owls didn't mess with them the hawks didn't mess with them the coyotes probably can't get to them because they spend most of the time in the water or on the island and we're currently building a floating duck house that hopefully you'll be seeing in the next few weeks and hopefully they'll start using it and we can put some cameras inside and get some up close shots and maybe even a live feed camera. <laughs> and you can see the whitetails aren't really sure what's going on. Not really sure what to make of all the babies. And here's another cool clip of them working their way around all the structure in the pond. I think they're either eating some algae or insects off the wood. But they'll spend a little time going around to each piece, diving down for a snack and then following Mama Duck to the next one.
and there's been some big changes with the underwater green lights this week and so you can see this is a clip from last week and it's pretty much looked like this every week where all of the school and threadfin shad and other small bait fish come up and school around the light well this week has been completely different and my theory is that the bass are finally big enough to start feeding on those threadfin shad so when we first put them in they were only two inches long and they ate a lot of those smaller mosquito fish and small fathead minnows and there's always a point in a largemouth's life where it's like a light switch turns on and that's when they get to that size where they're able to eat the threadfin shad and bluegill and that's when they become the ultimate predator and you'll see their growth rate skyrocket and in these few clips you can see right around the edge of the darkness those are some pretty big largemouth and I'd say that some of them are probably pushing three quarters of a pound already but it's definitely going to be cool to watch them grow. I'm going to try to put some more underwater cameras so we can track their growth. But these past couple of weeks, our fertilizer actually did what it's supposed to do and created a really good bloom, which is great for the pond, but it decreases the water visibility. So I wasn't able to get any underwater shots of them. But now it's time for the weekly night lapse. And I was able to get a really cool shot of an approaching thunderstorm. And you can see the lightning striking all around the pond and cabin. But I'm going to quit talking for just a second and let you listen to the actual sounds of nature and what it sounds like out here at night. And here's a couple of snapshots I took of the lightning popping. One week it's rainbows, the next week it's lightning. Never know what you're going to see out here. And I'm happy to say that the skunk we call Pepe Le Pew is finally back and made another appearance. We hadn't seen Pepe since last winter, but this little skunk had some personality. And we're about to see something I've never seen before. <laughs> and we saw Peppy flexing on some of the deer. I've never seen a skunk and a deer interact before, but that was a pretty cool shot. And I don't think Peppy's scared of anything. So Sarah heard the bluegills are getting bigger and wanted to come catch one. And she's been getting the technique dialed in. And look at that distance. Good job. <laughs> you always want to eat them. <laughs> you still want to eat it? Can I catch it? Yeah. Come on. He's kind of like our pet, isn't he? Like Copper. He's Copper's brother. Okay, he's him right down there. And instead of eating the bluegills, we fired up the grill for some marshmallows. It's still really gooey. <laughs> And folks, it's safe to say that the bucks are in velvet and they are traveling in some bachelor groups. We've been seeing two to three dozen bucks travel into the property at night, hitting the peanuts. Some of them actually eat the peanut hay and others will actually dig up the peanuts, which is another good source of protein for them this time of year. It's pretty interesting. They'll pass right by all of our feeders that have all the protein pellets and different soybean mixtures in there. And they'll come eat the peanuts first at night graze around out there in the field eating the hay, and then on their way back to the woods in the morning, that's when they'll stop by the feeders. And here's a cool clip of a pregnant doe that looks like she's about to pop any day now. And we saw a lot of twins last year, and if I had to bet, I would say she's probably got two in there. And here's another shot of all the deer heading back to the woods in the morning, and they always stop by and hit the feeders on their way.
It's so interesting how nature works. So the ducks were watching the deer and found out that there was food in the deer feeder. And so then they started to fly around it, but they couldn't figure out how to get in it. But eventually, one day, Mama Duck found out how to jump into it from down below. So then she flew back over and went and got the rest of the family. <laughs> the problem was the little babies couldn't jump up in the feeder. So sometimes you would see her hanging her head out and dropping some of the feed down to them. But I knew that eventually the little babies would be able to hop up in there. So I started putting a time lapse inside the deer feeder waiting on the day that the little babies could hop in, and eventually it happened. You can see Mama Duck has the orange beak, and all the little babies have the black beaks. And so now I may have to start putting a little bit of duck food in here too. But here soon we're going to have that floating duck house. We're just going to have plenty of food on it to attract the wild ducks. And I'm hoping these little guys will stay around until then. But also our two pet mallard ducks, Allie and Bam Bam, are probably going to have some more little ones soon because Allie's been sitting on a nest for about three to four weeks. So it could be any day now we have another group of hatchlings and so we'll probably let Allie raise them up a little bit and then maybe introduce all of them to the pond and see how they like it. But we also had some deer come through. It looks like a spike and some young bucks right at dark. But on this particular night, it was a full moon. So the moonlight had everything lit up all night long and it even almost makes it look like daylight outside. And then the sun comes up and the moon fades away. And I also got another cool shot of an owl. And I don't think this is one of the owls we've seen before, but I was looking through a spotting scope and this was about 500 yards away. So you can't see a lot of really good detail, but it looks like a different owl to me. Maybe has some different facial features, but I didn't get to see him for long, so I'm not 100% sure. And we also had another interesting interaction between the geese that we called Johnny and June and Cash and Carter. And I think they were having some turf wars over who was going to get this particular bank of the pond. And it started out pretty friendly. The ducks were holding their ground. The geese were trying to take over. And for a moment, it looked like the ducks were going to win. But eventually those geese teamed up and came back in force. <laughs> and they said, this is our bank today. And something else I learned about geese today, they sleep on one foot. Not 100% sure the logic behind that, but that's what they do. And now it's time to feed Mr. Moby. All right, folks, that is going to wrap up this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button because, as you can see, there is an abundance of wildlife making this pond their new home. And we're excited to see these little bass and bluegill grow up and have a lot of cool things planned for them in the future. But I hope you all enjoyed this video, and we will see you all next time.